My name is Michael Elliott. I live in this stealth mobile. The main focus I wanted with this van is to be stealth because I want to do a lot of urban living and traveling. I play music, so I go to venues. I want to sleep over there. I also do uh, videography, so I go to different locations. And I don't want to be bothered. I don't want anyone to know that there's someone A sleeping in here. I also don't want anyone to know that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of gear, dollars in gear in here. So I like this stuff. I like all this ratty shit. On the, inf on the front cab here, purposely left it like maybe a construction, other than the flowers too, I guess that may be giveaway, but maybe I'm just like a kind of a sensitive construction worker. But it's all dirty, I try not to even clean it in there, because if you peek in the front, I don't want you to get any clues that there's anything going on in the back. But this is my creation station, so this is where I hang out. The downside to keeping it stealth is it doesn't have the extended roof. So you're, you know, for me it's okay. If I was any taller than this, I'd probably have to get it down. But come on in. Come on in. It's perfectly fine. I got candy. We got all this fun stuff, man. We're going to have a great time in here. <laughs> but I set up this workstation because I do a lot of editing and also music production. So it was really important for me to have all the power I, I need to be able to do this. So I've got two solar panels on top. I've got two lithium batteries in there. 100 watt uh, or 100 uh what do you call it? Amp hours yeah. each. Thank you. Each. This is where I keep my clothes. I try to travel extremely light, as you can imagine. And then my cookware and all this stuff over here in this far corner. It's really important with such limited space that everything has its place, and that you take, you know, if you pick something out, take the couple of seconds to put it right back where you found it, because otherwise. You know you're gonna be like doing like i have a two burner it's in the front behind the seat i just pull it out propane set it up right there on the floor and then i've got my pots and pans and my all my stuff hanging here so it's a little bit of a transform thing i don't have an actual kitchen stationary kitchen but it's actually really helpful because i've been trying to lose weight so like now the more barriers to make food the better and then when i'm and it takes so much to make the food and like get the whole thing set up you want to be very um, intentional with it, right? So so all this has been given to me, or I've bought a few of them at like really special places. This was in Haida Gwaii, I bought that. This is beautiful, this is a, um, a pumpless water thing. You just, you charge it up with a USB and then you press it and it, you don't have to do anything special. It's great, running water. That's my plumbing. Yeah, I don't really need use a sink. And when I do my dishes, I actually just wash them in the pot. I'll fill it up, wash that and everything in the pot and then wash the pot. It's a queen mattress that I put on here and I built the frame to be expandable. So you just have to pick it up and pull it forward and then it's a full bed. The one challenge with the bed is I'm not a carpenter. So it's like in stages of falling apart all the time. That's the other thing about living on the road or living out of a van or van life in general is you're constantly fixing things constantly running into issues it's a such a creative problem solving um, like all the time you're just constantly like figure learning lessons making mistakes improving on it customizing moving forward like I, you can see this on my beautiful stucco job so this is where the garbage used to hang and the garbage isn't that heavy but what I started finding out is that with the stucco and the vibrations of the van, it doesn't have to be that heavy for it to like vibrate enough to like loosen it and then to fall off. Um, I use marine grade insulation. Then I like doubled it up. So it's really, really, really thick. In fact, in the summer, I can be in here until about two, three o'clock without sweating. And around that time, it starts to get a bit much. And then I can go find some shade. But if I find shade early in the day and just rock with the shade, I'll be, it's like a thermos in here. It'll be great, it'll be good all day. And then same in the winter, I've got a heater, a diesel heater. And with the insulation here, it's just, it's actually way too much. You gotta like turn it on and turn it off and turn it on and turn it off. So that's another issue that I learned the hard way. Always learning, always growing, right? So how did you stucco this? How did, how did the stucco come about? Um, with a with a sprayer, I uh, I was lucky enough to know somebody who had all the gear. He had all the knowledge, and I went over and over the course of two months because we were just doing it when he had time to do it. But he showed me how to do it, and I helped him. Relatively simple process. You just have to have the gear and the, the stuff. 
but you mix it all up and then you just spray it on and uh, I like it a lot I like it because when I close the door and I'm in here alone I don't feel other than the size of it other than the ceiling right being right above my head I don't feel like I'm in a van which is really important to me because I've done van life for off and on for about four years the first one was a minivan which that was like a, that was basically you're homeless you're homeless in a van so that everyone can like see you the, there's no insulation whatsoever um, and then the next iteration was this van but without stucco and I just put like wood up on the walls and stuff but you could still see the metal beams and then I would do my live streaming which I just set my phone up like this and plug it in and it takes all the sound from my soundboard and it just streams it over but from this view without the stucco you're seeing like metal it looks like you're in the back of a van and quite frankly it just looks a bit sad looks a bit like you know homeless and i don't disparage the homeless i got nothing of a problem with that but i don't want to i don't I'm not proud to broadcast it and that was getting in the way of me actually broadcasting so i'd you know get self-conscious easier and i wouldn't want to wouldn't want to show off to people, especially like family who are watching on social media. Like, what's what's Michael up to these days? Oh, he's in the back of this van playing guitar down by the river. Oh, wow. I knew he'd go far. But with the stucco, it actually looks really presentable, especially with the, the lights and everything. And they can go with different colors. And they, I play around with them and everything, make it look cool. This is the soundboard. It's a Zoom R16. It can hold eight channels. I only use it for two when I'm streaming, but I also take this everywhere I go. It's battery powered, it's got phantom power. So this takes the signal from the Zoom and then converts it into a signal that my phone can handle. But I don't know if you can swing around in here. You'll have to swing. There we go. But that's where I keep all my hygienic stuff, my hygiene stuff. That's my bathroom, essentially. When it's a sunny day, I constantly fill up these battery banks and just have them on the ready for night or if we get a couple of days like this where power is a bit you know, stingy, I'll plug my computer into this and generally don't have a problem doing that. I have two batteries. They're, the reason I put them in here is to try to keep them insulated. They don't offset any gases because they're lithium. Um, so I was just trying to keep them warm. I actually have a, what do you call that? It's like a hot water tank heater which is just a just a it's like a cloth with wires in it that i can wrap around the batteries and plug in and then it's kind of like a weird system because i'm powering that with the batteries and then one of the batteries from renergy has is the um self-heating battery but again didn't really help me didn't really help me this last winter so i'm gonna have to <laughs> if i want to continue going in the winter i have to workshop that in and then the charge controller from Renogy, the Rover, I think it's the 40, yeah, the 40 amp, MMP, or MPPT. This is my fuse box that I haven't used yet. It's supposed to run my fan. That's where my fan goes. So that's how incompetent I am with um, running wires and electricity. This has been like this for two years. I just don't use, I just don't use my fan and every time in the middle of the summer I, I'm sweating buckets staring at this cord going like what it's like it's two three feet away Matt I'll eventually do it and then this I got some artwork here too I mean I've got these are vinyls one of my favorite musicians I ever saw playing live Ben Kaplan just completely captivated an audience just himself and an acoustic guitar and I always was really inspired by that and then of course the great Bill Burr Okay, so that's another thing. That's really important. That This door is like falling off the hinges because of the stucco. Because it's not just stucco. It's stucco mixed with cement, which in hindsight probably was a great idea, right? Even though this is an old electrician van and it's got like crazy gray suspension and everything, like it's built for heavy loads. I'm finding things like this are happening. Like this door, I need to be really careful about closing and opening it now because there's so much weight on it. That it's not meant to have but anyway it was really important for me to like have some kind of a like a art thing in here to make it a little bit more homey and i want to be able to change them out so i just put a bunch of magnets on them and i can just take the mat take it off open up the sheet change the art and then put it back in there and it's road worthy because it doesn't get wet or wrecked very often poke in there you can see the heater just a standard diesel heater but I like that I was able to put it inside the cab 
and keep the fuel all tidy back there as well. And then the exhaust comes out here. And no issues, I'm still alive, so for now, we're good. And then the cooler is just an electric cooler. So it's iceless electric cooler. Doesn't do a great job. You can't keep like frozen stuff in there and it sucks up a lot of energy over time. But if I'm driving to a destination that's like two hours away, it's perfect. I plug it into my car battery, let it charge for two hours and then keep it in a shaded area. And you're usually pretty good for things like milk, butter, you know, leftovers. But I wouldn't keep maybe meats in there for a while. Why do I live in a van? There's a lot of answers to that. I mean, we could go down the road of rent. You know, even just the idea of rent has always rubbed me wrong. So I, I don't like it. I understand it's necessary and I'm not trying to drag on landlords or anything like that. But for me personally, I'd much rather live with less, live an alternative lifestyle and save my money and not be paying off other people's mortgages. That just makes more sense to me. But then also I'm a creative, I'm an adventurer, so I, I crave adventure, I crave new things, and this type of lifestyle is all about that. You, you get outside your comfort zone, which is my next reason. When I first started living out of a van, it was through, it was a choice, but it was through necessity. I just moved to Kelowna, I didn't know anyone, I moved from Ontario, I knew not a single soul here. I love the area, I love the community, so I decided to stay. And what I did that summer is, I started busking and playing music on the streets because I knew I wanted to play music but I didn't know anyone, didn't have any connections so I just went and played music and like a madman I became addicted to it. Within like the first three months of me doing it I was starting to make more money than the minimum wage job I had gotten here. So I quit the job, I moved to busking full time and it was great. It was the best summer of my life. It felt like recess. You remember how cool recess was? Well that was my whole summer when I got here. But come the winter months all the tours take off and quite frankly the locals were getting a bit sick of me because i'm down there for like eight ten hours singing the same two hours worth of music every day on repeat so obviously i, I rub some people raw but what happened is i could no longer afford rent going into the winter months so i had this decision i go well I'm starting to make contacts. I'm like, when I was busking, I would meet people who own wineries and venues and they'd come up to me and start to hire me. So I was making these contacts. I was in the process of building these contacts and it felt really hopeful. So I had to make a decision. Should I moonlight as a musician, get a job and survive the winter? Or do I need to cut out all my overhead so that I can afford to be a musician throughout the winter? So I decided to do that. I had a minivan at the time, which was ridiculous. And I didn't know how ridiculous it was until hindsight. But I was literally like in the winter, in like December, January, completely bundled up with all the clothes I had with a 40, minus 40 sleeping blank tied up to my neck. And then I, as crazy as this sounds, I construct a tent with like a little pole in the back of this minivan, a tent over my face. And then I had a bucket that had a cage on it that I'd light candles in and put it in the tent like right next to my head, right? So obviously playing with my life every single night to stay warm, but it was, it was safe enough. I'm just being dramatic. But the point is that was like the most uncomfortable I'd ever been. I was in this strange new town. I was trying this, I was trying to chase my dreams down uh, as, as much as I could and just be completely in, uh, in it. And then I was sleeping in a van, in a minivan that had all these windows around. So if I was parking anywhere and like slept in town, who knows who's peeking in on me, right? There's some unsavory characters here. They could be just getting off on the inside. Like I'm just sleeping down and they're just, you know, getting their pleasures off me. But um, it was so uncomfortable. What ended up happening is it weeded out a lot of my bad habits. When you're that uncomfortable, you're sleeping in a van, you don't wanna wake up in the morning and then roll over and grab your phone and spend the first hour on social media or watching YouTube or laying about. You wanna get the out of the van, right? And so if I'm waking up at like six in the morning and it's freezing, I need to get out. So I either need to go to Tim Hortons and set up my computer and start doing work or I need to go to the gym and start working out. And that's when it kind of, I started to really appreciate being uncomfortable in that kind of way. Because it forces you to grow in all these wild ways. It's almost like when I started to think about it, it's like a shortcut. And at the time, like a shortcut towards your goals. And you can apply that to the renting thing. If you're trying to save up money for a house and you 
are the type of character that can get away with this kind of lifestyle and like live like this, then it makes all the sense in the world. Don't spend your money on rent, save it all in the bank, live like this, and you're gonna get your property way quicker. And it's like that with a lot of other things too that I found. For example, I'd now do about 50 to 60% of my income comes from videography. And at the time, I was an intern at a place here called uh, Film Factory, it's in town. And so I was working for free, learning this skill, learning this trade. What allowed me to do that? Well, I didn't have to pay rent, so I could do that with my time. Um, and then the exercising thing. So ever since doing van life, I've lost 60 pounds just by, and I attribute a lot of it to the discipline of, that I gained from being uncomfortable. And so that is what spurred me on to do it the second time when I bought this van and started living in it, the second rendition. And then when the lockdowns happened, I decided, okay, I'm gonna go do this again. Because with the lockdowns, kind of made, kind of, it was like, why be safe? Why be secure? Like, why, why not take all the risks and chances that you are interested in taking? Because you could be secure and safe and play it by the rules and and then everything gets taken away from you anyway. So why not just do this? The, the stigma was really hard at the beginning. It's leveled out now because I've been more confident with the reasons why I'm doing it and being more confident broadcasting that. And then um, going to the bathroom, that's a really hard one, right? Like always needing to find a toilet somewhere, uh, especially in Kelowna in the winter when everything's closed. Uh, luckily, I have a gym membership that's 24 access, so that's how I kind of went around that. That's where I shower too. I have a 24 access gym here, shower there, go to the bathroom there, and work out there, which is another great thing for my discipline. If I didn't need to shower there, I probably wouldn't have gone there so often, right? But now you need to shower every day, might as well work out, might as well run on the treadmill a little bit. This past winter, I had an issue with my batteries. They weren't charging fast enough. They what was going on is the, the cold gets into the batteries and then they can't charge quick enough and then you have lower amount of light because of the clouds and the snow but then also less light during the day because of the winter. So it's this battle every day you're losing ground, losing ground, you can't fill it up fast enough and my heat's attached to the batteries. So what I was doing, again resorting to my candle ways, I would get a plate of candles going in here and I would set them up and then I would try to work on my stuff on my computer, which also needs electricity. So I'd work as long as I could for like an hour or two in here, and then I'd have to go to Tim Hortons and I'd have to plug in for an hour or two, and then I could come back into the van, light the candles. But all of a sudden you're getting to a point where you're too uncomfortable and you're spending all your energy and resources on fixing the, like, like figuring out the candles, figuring out the heat. Oh, I gotta go get electricity. And then all of a sudden um, your productivity really, really takes a hit. And that, was, and that was no longer fine for me. There is this Goldilocks zone of where I can be comfort-wise and still be productive. Um, I think there's a lot of strength in just doing it, like just diving in. I think there's a lot of hesitation around getting things perfect, but there's no way to find out what's going to be perfect until you're actually living in it, doing it. And also, you know, do your research, but don't get lost in it. Everyone's got their own ideas of what you should do and how you should do it. But it's such, it's such a unique thing to you and how you're going to live. So you gotta, you gotta prioritize what's important to you. Some people would, um, a kitchen is super important to a lot of people. To me, not so much. I, I live mostly in and around urban areas. I don't care if I have like a freezer full of meats, for example, stuff like that. Um, and to me, music production and video production are really important. So that's what I spent most of my time trying to figure out. And now that I have those two things, finding meals or going out for meals more often or visiting friends to have decent meals or just using my little two burner propane thing and getting away with what I can do on my own, that's fine for me. I, I don't suffer from that. But yeah, just just do it. You know, if you're actually thinking about it and you want to do it, then I think you should because it's it. Even for a summer, you know, think about it like a little hobby thing. Do it. It's really fun. You'll get a lot out of it. I almost guarantee you'll be a better person by the end of it. Like you'll be a better version of yourself. It just happens. 
as young creatives or entrepreneurs, you know, you've got the strength when you're young, you've got the ambition, you got the motivation. So just go ahead and do it. Dive in. So there's something about challenging yourself and being outside your comfort zone that's going to make a lot of things apparent to you. Um, I think I struggled with loneliness in the beginning and not that this lifestyle, well, any lifestyle can be lonely and certainly living in a van can be lonely, especially if you're going out in the middle of nowhere by yourself or if you feel alienated by your friends or something because of that choice, you can always feel lonely. But what I, what I started to realize, one of the big things is I might have a, like a, um, an unhealthy codependency type of vibe when like, like I've always lived with roommates, I've always had girlfriends, I've always been with family, like I've always been close with people in living quarters. And so that was one thing that was really like revealed to me. And what I realized is the more quality time you spend with yourself, the less you can lie about your behaviors and who you are. And that's not a bad thing. You should be able to, not be able to, but you should endeavor to discover yourself as as truthfully as possible so that way you can all you can work on yourself and change things that's the greatest thing about being human is you can actually change and grow right so but you need to first see what is what's real versus what you want to be real and that can be really tricky for a lot of people so i think that's one big big thing that i learned living in the van doing van life in general i think we live in a in a time and place where there's so many screens and there's so much addiction i know whoever's watching this you're watching it on a screen right now smash your phone do it right now you'll be better off but in in reality in truth i jest of course don't smash your phone but there's a lot of truth to it because we, I believe that technology, the way we have it, and the internet and social media all bundled together is kind of like fire. It's this massive technology that's revolutionized how we live life. And if you could imagine going way, way back to when we were cave peoples and discovering how to harness fire, you can imagine that generations of people probably burnt their houses down, burnt their families, burnt their hands, burnt their faces, all just from trying to utilize this technology to do useful things like cook food and heat their homes. All things we take for granted right now. I think we're in the same process with, with the internet. Is It's such a powerful tool, such a powerful technology, that the first couple of generations which we're in are burning ourselves like crazy with it. And so we... And so that's what I've kind of realized with this whole lifestyle as well, is I need to, personally for me, I need to take, I need to not stand so close to the fire. So I'm, I'm about to play tonight at a show in Mission um, with a band called Hot Sax, but we're very underground, we like to keep it underground, we just have a website and an email list. So it's hotsax.ca, but you can find me online and follow my van life adventures at Kelowna Busker, either on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, Kelowna Busker. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.